Welcome to Lavinia World. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Japanese bound arginal. My name is Monica of Heartcraft Paper. All right, welcome everyone and thank you for joining. So today I have this wonderful stamp set that I purchased um, from Pink Ink Designs and this is called the Acorn Fairy. And this particular image you can find at the Lavinia World Shop. Just head on over and I will link that below. As you can see, this is a very large image and it has a lot of detail. This is uh, probably better for a five by seven um, card if you're going to use it for making a card. But today I decided that I wanted to make this particular image and prepare it for an art journal. I figured that that would be a great way to decorate the outside of an art journal in which I would like to lay some items in. We're going to use this sand colored dye, um, dye ink. You can probably find something similar in the shop and I'll go ahead and link that as well. And we're going to utilize that to kind of stamp out our image in order to watercolor. Now, as you can see here, it does disappear in your watercoloring. Um, you can probably see a few here and there, which is not too bad because they're fairly well hidden. So here you can probably see that little bit of tan ink, but it's not something that will catch the eye. So we're going to work on getting this together. All right, so here I have my image ready to go. I've stamped it out in that sand colored um, dye ink and I'm just placing down some water as well as the color in order to spread this around. Now I'm going to fast forward through um, quite a bit of the actual coloring because more or less the video is not about the coloring but I just wanted to show you uh, that watercolor while it is beautiful it doesn't necessarily have to be quite so difficult as people might think if you're used to utilizing um, copic markers or color pencils the same applies to this the only difference is that with the same color you can darken and lighten dependent on the intensity of color that you add towards the particular image or section and it's actually pretty forgiving because you can actually utilize water in order to act as an eraser for you and um, lift up some of that color in the event that you do make a mistake and I have made mistakes on my image you just can't tell because again you're able to really wash out those errors just with a little bit of water but what I did try to do with this particular image um, is bring in some wonderful depth of color uh, trying to bring it to life and this is something that as you can see here I have a little bit of a boo-boo um, but something that you can utilize with any of the solid stamped images if you would like uh, to be able to bring out some of those features and make your own features in some of these stamps so this is a great way to do this So here is my image all colored in. You saw it before, but I wanted to kind of really have you take a look at the colors, the gradations that you can get just with watercolor because it is so easy to blend. Now, I wanted to initially make this into a piece of artwork that I would hang on my wall, but then I got the idea, why not make a little journal that I can utilize to place my artwork into? So this is what I came up with. I'm going to utilize this particular image to put right on top of the cover here. And I will decorate that so I have a wonderful place to turn to for some of my memories. We're gonna start off first with 12 pieces of the white cardstock. And this particular cardstock is actually very sturdy. It's very thick. This is 120 pound cardstock. So it's not like a regular 65 pound. You can probably find this at Staples for uh, 120 pound. Now I'm going to take craft cardstock and make those my front and back. I'm going to adhere it onto my cardstock, um, one piece at least. So again, 
um, we have a total of two pieces of cardstock and 10 of the white. I'm gonna start by adhering my craft cardstock onto my white cardstock. We're gonna lay the glue all the way across. Now I just made sure to push that glue all the way to the edges because I didn't get close enough to the edge. I like using a zigzag motion in order to bring glue to the very edge of my cardstock and in any of my work. That just makes it easier. But you can always use your fingers to kind of spread that around. All right, we're now ready to proceed. I'm gonna bring back my 10 sheets of white cardstock and then we're gonna lay the two craft sheets as a sandwich. We're gonna put those cardstock right in between. Okay, so you're gonna need your score pal for this. We're gonna begin by scoring our sheets of paper. This is going to be scored at the one inch mark. So as I work here, I'm working fairly quickly, but I am scoring three times on each of these. Again, this is 120 pound cardstock, so it's very thick. It's very important that you go ahead and get that crease in three times. With our scoring done, I use some binder clips to hold my paper together. Now I'm gonna measure out where I'm going to hole punch my paper all the way through. Now there's multiple options to this. You can measure all at once as I am doing here on the very top page. And I'm gonna measure about half an inch here from the edge or a quarter of an inch and then one inch across. I'm just gonna take my pen and I'm gonna go ahead and start at half an inch and then work my way across one inch. All right, time to get hole punching. I'm using my big crop dial in order to make punches. Since this is 12 pages, I was able to do this utilizing my crop dial. But it's up to you if you would like to utilize the handheld as this can actually be quite difficult getting through all 12 punches. It did take me a little bit of work and quite a bit of hand strength here in order to get everything punched all the way through. So again, that's up to you. You can do it in multiple pieces as well. Okay, with all the hole punches done and completed, as you can see here, we were able to get them through all 12 pages. We are now ready to create more stability by actually putting in some eyelets. Now, I'm gonna put the eyelets just on the front and back cover of my journal, so that way I am not having to put it through every single page. All right, time to bring back my crocodile. I'm just gonna set it so that it is on the setting for eyelets. I'm utilizing a 1 8 inch eyelet for this. Now I just want to set my crocodile in order to set the 1 8 inch size eyelets. I have a rainbow colored and then here I have a more of a rustic color that I think I might want to use and I'm gonna place it into each one of these holes so that way we can create a better and um, more strength to this particular book. So it's gonna take nine of these for this particular, the way that we punched it. Um, traditionally they do three, maybe four, but I like to add a little bit more strength to my bindings in, by creating more holes into the paper and more stitching. So I'm gonna select my items, set them out, and hole punch the whole entire thing. So this is where the fun begins for me. I absolutely love using my crop dolls to set in eyelets. I mean, I find it to be quite fun and enjoyable. I guess it's kind of one of those types of things that you find to be satisfying. So 
that's my little thing about crafting and there's several things that I just truly enjoy, this being one of them. We're now ready to put our book together so that we can start binding. And here you see it turned out pretty nice. And this is going to fold over quite easily once we go ahead and bind it. Okay, let's go ahead and bring back our white cardstock and fill in this journal. I am going to go ahead and set everything together in order to make my life easier for binding. Now I'm utilizing a neutral color twine. It is going to be six times the length of this particular journal. Now you can probably make it seven just to be on the safe side. You do want to make sure you have an extra amount of twine or string. You don't want to have quite a short amount since this is going to actually bind on the side as well, not just through um, like a regular stitch. So I have a yarn needle that has an extra wide um, eye for thicker um, strings and yarns. So this helps quite a bit. This is always nice to have. To begin our stitching, we are going to count to our sixth page, which is just the middle of our journal. And we are going to start by pulling through the string from inside of the book. And you wanna make sure you leave a long enough string so that you can maintain it and be able to tie off later. So we're gonna start in the middle of our punches. And again, leave a string that will be long enough for you to tie and just kind of lay that going along the length of the book. And by holding the book together, you will also hold that string in place. We'll stitch through the bottom so that it goes over the binding on the side. Pull that through and you have your first stitch. And this will be held in place as you can see because the stitch is in the middle first. And we'll move on to our next pull and pull through over the edge of the binding and right back on into that same punch. From underneath, we will move on to the next punch and we will insert our needle upwards. Now this can be tricky sometimes, so it's probably easiest just to flip over your book, but I was trying to be considered of you guys as viewers so that I didn't have to do too much moving. And then you'll pull it through and right on over the side of the bind of the journal, excuse me, and then right back on through the same punch. You'll repeat this process throughout the whole entire book binding. Now, as you can see, we are leading to one side of the book. And as we get to the end, what we're gonna do is instead of going up and then over the side, we're gonna go over the end here. So we're gonna pull that needle through and then we're gonna go over the end instead of from the, from the side. And then we'll pull it through and we'll repeat the process from there by pulling it over the side and passing it through once again. Now, as you can see, we have several miss spots, I guess you would call them. But now that we're headed on to our other end of the book, this will be covered up as we go up, down as a regular stitch. And that will make it nice and neat. And you have one long stitch throughout the whole entire book. So as we get to the middle here, we are going to repeat this process on the other side of the book. Now you just wanna be careful when you're passing your needle here that you don't pull that thread that we have kind of going through the middle of the book kind of pull it taut and then make sure that you can pass that needle through. Again, we're gonna repeat the process that we just completed on this side as well. So here we're almost done. Now it's time just to head back in the other direction. 
but we do have to complete our end stitching. So that means that we're gonna go over the end and then over the side. And once we have those stitches completed, we'll go ahead and go right on back. Once we come to the middle though, you're gonna see that there is a little bit of a different stitch we're gonna have to do through here. Um, because the needle is actually quite thick, uh, we're gonna have to go ahead and pull our thread through. So the way that this is going to work, and I did have a little bit of a difficult time because initially with a thinner set of paper, it is a little bit easier to do and kind of pull that needle in through the bottom and in between the pages. But what I decided to do was actually just pass that needle on through to the other side and then just pull the thread kind of with, my, with the needle in place. So here you'll see me just pass it on through instead. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use that needle to kind of trickle that thread right on through. It'll take a bit of work. So now that we have our thread pulled all the way through into the center of our book, we're now ready to tie off. Just go ahead and make a double knot here in the center of the book. Now you have to remember this particular book because of how sturdy these pages are. Um, it can get a bit difficult because they are a bit stiff. So go ahead and make sure you double tie that knot. There's the first one. Now I just have to complete the second one. And hopefully it'll be a lot easier than how I'm working this one right now. And success. I've got my knots in place. Now it's just a matter of trimming off the excess string. And once I have that trimmed, I'm gonna go ahead and use my needle to tuck these strings right on into the binding itself. This will keep it hidden and out of the way. You won't even know that it's there. I'm done with my binding. All I have to do now is work the paper back and forth over that binding so that it folds nicely and makes it easier to move. So I'm just going to go ahead and move my paper here and fold it along that crease that we also created. And this will help it open up and work easily for us. Be able to decorate this any way that you want, but I came in with some vintage photo in order to distress this quite a bit. I wanted to give this journal a bit of an old time feel. So blending in some color along the edges does help quite a bit, especially with leather journals. You tend to find that they go dark around the edges because the oils in the hands naturally grabbing it make it become darker over time. So that was the idea of what I wanted to come across with this. You'll repeat this process on the back side of your book as well. Now don't worry about getting ink over the um, string. It will be part of it and will give it more of a vintage feel as well. I came in with some ground espresso in order to darken that up just a little bit more and just really in certain spots, not everywhere. So I'm now ready to lay down my image onto the front here. Now it's just a matter of how I want to do that. So let's go ahead and start by taking um, a pair of scissors and I am going to just kind of cut around the edges. And this is going to be kind of in a zigzaggy way. And the reason for that is because I want it to get more of a distressed look to the paper. And I will show you exactly what I do in order to get that result. Mm -hmm. 
Now keep your scissors out because we are going to distress the paper even more. Now that we have all those ridges, it makes it a little bit easier for the distressing and giving it more of a torn feel to it. Just make sure that you get into those little grooves there. All right, so this is what I have. And I'm just going to come in with the um, ground espresso and of course, bring in some of that ink onto the edges of my paper that will help quite a bit making this look just like it is an old parchment. Now you'll notice here and there that I will try and roll the paper. Now what I do is just kind of roll it between my fingers as if though it's putty just to get it nice and rounded. I don't want it to be just bent over. I want it to look rounded. So again, pinch between your fingers, roll back and forth. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up coloring the edges here. And once I have that done, we're going to go ahead and figure out where we want our placement here. Initially, I wanted to have just a little bit of distress, but I figured this gold with um, this metallic gold polish that I got from Cosmic Shimmer would work wonders. The thing that I feel with fairies is that you get a wonderful idea of them kind of stealing gold and hiding it just because they love that metal and that shine so much. Or at least that's the stories that I've always read. So I'm just gonna add some gold polish onto my book and just put it sparingly here and there. While I was working through the process, I really wanted to kind of darken up the gold. So I brought in some Gran Espresso and just passed that over. And then I decided, hey, why not add some gold onto my parchment here? Just because it might give it a nice little touch. So I went through and added quite a bit more gold polish onto my journal as well as my image or my parchment paper here. Okay, so I'm gonna add some embellishments here. I have two pieces of torn craft paper that I think would fit nicely with this opal um, polish that I have here, again, from Cosmic Shimmer. I'm just gonna go ahead and add that over my paper. The thing about this particular polish is that it gives it a really lovely color, a shade of pink and purple, and you'll see that once it is done and it kind of hits the light here. All right. We're now done with our polishing. Now you are going to want to be careful with this because the polish does stain the hands, as you can see. All you have to do is wash it off with water and you'll be fine. Now here is a closer look at what we have and look at the shine and the color that you get off of that just from the different angles of light. So in order to add a little bit more depth, I am going to go ahead and corrugate my paper. So that way I have a nice, neat little texture that I'm gonna add onto my book here. Yeah, how neat that is. And then you get a lot of that color popping through because of the hills and valleys on this paper. Now I just need to figure out what I'm going to do with it. Now I'm going to place these, I think, on opposite corners and allow some of that interest to pop in different directions. So we'll go ahead and use some liquid glue in order to adhere these down. Now, depending on your own taste, if you want to use a hot glue gun, that's also something you can do as well. So just make sure that you press it down firmly just to make sure that those little hills and valleys get enough adherence there because of the corrugation. I just wanna check out how this is going to look just before I glue this down. With some liquid glue, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this down onto everything right now. I am going to add a little bit more embellishments to this, but we'll go ahead and get to that once we get there. I 
I decided I wanted to use a little bit more gold in this. So I came in and added some gold onto these leaves or these fronds that I had die cut. Um, as you can see, I didn't go too overboard. I used them also on these flowers along the edges here. And then I came in with some ground espresso along the edges on this yellow flower to make it stand out. I also have these little buds. So these are the items I'm gonna be using to decorate today. In order to add a little bit more accent, I came in with this um, gold glitter paste, or rose gold glitter paste, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just kind of went around the edges here to add it along the side as well as on this corrugated piece of paper that I have just because I figured I wanted a little bit of extra shine. So make sure you have your hot glue gun ready and we're gonna start adding our fronds. Now I chose hot glue because I wanna make sure that they stay attached to my book. Once I've already kind of checked my placement, that's when I decide where I want things. Um, I kind of had an idea previously with where I wanted these fronds, which were on this particular side of the book, just over the corrugated paper. And once I get those down where I want them, I'm going to set the flowers down just to kind of make sure I know where I want that third front to sit. Now for this little bunch of rosebuds that I have here, I want to kind of place them somewhere on the inside of those roses. I don't want them on the outside. So I think this might be a really good placement for them just so that it's popping out of the top there. Now I could have added some more, but I felt that it was just a small little accent that added to these roses. I didn't really want to put too much. Now I am going to add some flowers into the upper left hand corner as well. I figure that as long as I'm adding flowers, I might as well also decorate that side just to kind of help balance this out. So I have a white rose here and that is the one that I added some gold accents to. So we're going to glue that down with hot glue and then I'm going to bring in some more of the rosebuds because it seems kind of lonely there. I just feel like it needs a little something extra. So I got this particular pack of roses from Amazon and I'll link that in the description below because I think these are the cutest little flowers you could ever find. Now in order to make your bunch, you grab three and you twist them around just kind of like you would a sandwich tie. Once you have them ready, snip off the end to the length that you would like. And from there, just go ahead and hot glue it and paste it down wherever you'd like. All right, so here you have your journal decorated and ready to go. And now all you have to do is put your own artwork into the center of these pages. You can put them down with washi tape, you can glue them down, and if you want to add a little bit extra, it's all up to you. Thanks for joining today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching Lavinia World. For more videos and tutorials like these, don't forget to subscribe. Visit the website at www.laviniaworld.com.